Hi there and welcome to this lecture about Sweden's history during the early 20th century. My name is Marcus Henriksson and I'm history teacher here in Sweden. During the early 20th century many people here in Sweden were still farmers. At the beginning of the 20th century 75% of Sweden's population still lived in the countryside despite the population of about 5 million. But yeah, migration to the cities, also known as urbanization, continued to increase as society became increasingly industrialized. But now we can see the differences between the rich and the poor start to decrease in society. Norway left the personal union with Sweden in the year 1905. That is, in fact, after about 100 years or so. And they decided to leave Sweden because the fact that Sweden didn't treat the Norwegian people as good as they wanted to, but also because Sweden was not in a position to attack them if they decided to leave. So Sweden agreed to this, because in fact we wanted to avoid another war. And in addition, Norway was pretty poor as a country during this time. They hadn't struck oil yet. 1912, we have the Summer Olympics here in the Swedish capital, Stockholm. And yeah, Sweden won the most medals, but they may have been because we also had the biggest squad. Wink wink. People during the early 20th century also started to join the unions. They joined different groups, different associations and different unions. Therefore, the employers no longer could cut wages or fire people like they had in the past. 1914 we have World War I and Sweden positioned itself as neutral during this war. However, the supplies of food got low. So we have the hunger riots here in Sweden during the year 1917. Over 1,800 women in a town in Sweden called Norrköping marched towards the town hall and began to protest against the poor food supply. After the demonstration, the women stormed several bakeries and also meat shops. We can also see similar riots in the capital Stockholm and a large town in Sweden called Gothenburg. During this time, people here in Sweden wanted to vote because earlier only rich people had been allowed to vote and the more votes uh, you got was depending on how rich you were as a person. The liberals and the social democrats demanded universal suffrage, while the right, the moderates and the Christian democrats tried to stop this at all costs. However, after a very long campaign, the common people here in Sweden finally managed to get equal voting rights. This happened for men in the year 1918 and women in the year 1919. And the first election for both of them happened in the year 1921. We can also see several important Swedish, Swedish inventions during this time, such as the ball bearings and the dynamite by Alfred Nobel. He is also the man who have created the Nobel Prize. And we can see several important new industries, such as clothes, porcelain, bicycles, etc. However, paper, wood, iron and steel were still very important. Sweden got a new king, Gustav V or Mr. G as he is also called. He loved to play tennis and during his time as a tennis player he had a nickname Mr. G. The Social Democrats took over here in Sweden in the year 1920. And the first Social Democratic Prime Minister was named Jalmar Branting. 
he began to build up Sweden's welfare system and also the Swedish defense. Now we can also see the first housewives here in Sweden, since the people started to earn more money. Which made it possible for wives to stay home and take care of the home and the children. However, this is only applied to the middle class, but yeah, it should continue a long time here in Sweden, since the fact that the men earned much more than the women. The stock market crashed in USA in 1929. And this also in the end affected Sweden, since many companies here went bankrupt and many people became unemployed. One of the worst affected persons was Ivar Kriger. He was also the world's largest match manufacturer. He had a huge industrial empire, both here in Sweden, but also in Europe and the USA. And he tried to use his financial assets to stop the crisis. In fact, he took out such huge loans that when the crisis was unable to uh, stop, he got basically bankrupt. So many historians say that in 1932 he shot himself in the head because of this fact. But several historians have recently argued that maybe he didn't shoot himself after all. Because after his demise, several other industry leaders here in Sweden took control of his empire. In the year 1931, we have the so-called river strike here in Sweden, eller Ådals strejken, eller förlåt, uh, strejken. Many workers demanded reasonable wages, but the employer refused to agree. Instead, they called in the military, and once again they shot a bunch of people, so five people died. I hope that you, during this short lecture, have learned something new about Sweden's history. The sources I have used for this video and lecture are as follows. Historia by Elisabeth Ivansson, Robert Sandberg and Matthias Duray. Perspective on History by Lars Hans and Norian Nyström. Histo uh, history Documentary, Sweden's History by Martin Temel and De Carison. And also a website called Esorummet. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment sections below. I hope that you have a great day. Bye!